Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline and today we are doing another vintage hard goods haul but as usual I have other craziness mixed in with it. So if you're new to my channel, I am a full-time reseller on eBay. I also flip things locally on OfferUp and Facebook Marketplace. Let me say that Facebook Marketplace is really becoming a thing and in the evenings when I post things, I just do meetups at a local parking lot near my home so that I can just throw on shoes and flip things quite often. So there's a couple things that I want to share with you guys. You guys have been asking about Facebook Marketplace. When I post an item, it's very easy. There are no fees and I am not a big Facebook profile user. Let me say that. So I created my profile profile with just a common last name, not my own last name. And when somebody contacts me for an item that I have listed, I let them know whether it's available or not. Most times if it's not available, it'll have a sold marked on it. So you really don't get a lot of messages about the sold items, but sometimes people still ask. But when an item is available, I try to get back to the people quite quickly because Facebook Marketplace seems to be a very instant, quick flip type of situation. So in the evenings when I am working on other things or just relaxing and somebody messages me, I try to do a meetup fairly quickly. I try to be available. And like I said, I meet up in a store parking lot that is near my home, very convenient. And I just let the person know that they're welcome to come pick it up. I give them the location, the store name, and I instruct them to message me when they're 10 minutes away. That way I don't waste my time with people that don't show up because it's very rare somebody is going to say, yes, I'm on my way, I'm 10 minutes away, and then not show up. So I have had great success on Facebook Marketplace. And one of the greatest things is there's no fees. So that has worked out well for bigger items that I really don't want to list or ship on eBay. Now, while I do have some bigger things on eBay, I make them local pickup only. And that way I have stopped shipping very large items. But today I am going to show you things that I picked up. Most of this is thrift store finds, a couple different thrift stores. And when I can, I will let you know what I paid for them, when I remember, and what I expect to get for them. If you really want to see what my items are bringing, you can always go into my eBay store, Lavender Clothesline, and sort my items by solds. And that will show you what items I am selling every day. With all of that said, let's jump right into it. Let's get started. Hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see what I found. The first item that I found in a thrift store was this fun dish. This is definitely vintage. It's a ceramic dish. Uh, no branding on the bottom. It does say 32 out of 929. So I imagine if having that numbering, I imagine a company made these. Now a lot of times these type items were unfinished and the person buying them would paint them. It was kind of like a craft thing to do. But I could be wrong about that. It could be that it is a craft item. I'm unsure, but I will go ahead and look at it, run a comp on it with descriptive words that will hopefully show me what I have here. But I can tell it is an appetizing or a d'oeuvres tray. And the mushrooms in the middle are fixed, but they have, are they fixed? Oh, it screws off. You know, I just discovered that. Let me see if this comes off and what this is. Now, I thought originally it might be a salt and pepper shaker. Does this come off? Now it's a question. Huh, it goes round and round, but it doesn't seem to come off. Huh, might be a cork. This is getting more and more interesting. What is this? Why would this unscrew? Okay, I have no idea, <laughs> which is not unusual for me. But as you can see, the mushrooms have little holes, and I think that's for toothpicks. So you would put your olives or your little pigs in a blanket or your sandwiches or cheese cubes, and you would have little toothpicks coming out of the mushroom, as far as I can tell. That's what I think they're for. But I thought this was great fun. I paid $3 for it, and I have no idea what this will bring. If they're very common, I don't imagine this is going to bring more than $25, but still a good profit, good pickup. And now I'm going to be playing with this mushroom thing to see if this comes off and hopefully I won't break it. All right, item number two, I actually put in my cart and then I was thinking about it, hesitating a little bit, is this beautiful vintage brass tray. 
So as you can see, it has like a, a railing, like an edge all the way around. And it is a bamboo style, not real bamboo, you know, bamboo look with two handles, very large. This is what the bottom looks like, very shiny. And as you can see, I paid $7 for it in Goodwill. Now I went back and forth a few times with this tray in my mind, <laughs> saying, do I wanna ship something this large? And the end result, of course, as you can tell, is I bought it because I did have the thought that this tray is really wonderful for entertaining. This is great for a bar or just any kind of large entertaining, maybe a wedding or a big party. So with everybody practicing social distancing, I am convinced that when the COVID pandemic has subsided, hopefully sooner than later, that families and friends are really gonna wanna get together and entertain each other. That's just my thinking. I really think we're gonna see a surge in parties and get togethers because everybody is really tired of social distancing. So that is just my thought. I am picking up quite a bit of entertaining wear, I'm gonna call it, when I see something, because I don't think this pandemic is gonna last forever and we're all gonna wanna hang out with each other and have fun celebrations. So I am saying yes to entertaining wear, bar wear, you know, things that can really be brought out for large serving of parties. Does that make sense? Large serving of parties? <laughs> serving large parties. So I said yes to this, $7, and I would think this is probably going to bring between $45 and $55. So what am I basing that on? I don't have a clue. I didn't check any comps for any of this stuff today. So just know that the prices I'm telling you are pretty much guesses. Staying with the brass theme, I found these gorgeous bookends. Look at these vintage bookends. Are these not gorgeous? I was so happy to find these. I love finding these because they're beautifully made. The aesthetic is beautiful. Bookends, I do very well with bookends, especially vintage ones that are heavy. So when I saw these sitting on the shelf, I was thrilled. I paid $3 for the two. And as you can see, it's the famous, I don't know the name of this artwork. It's a Native American sitting on a horse. And you can see the bottom has the telltale sign of aged felt, which really, really locks in the thought that these are vintage. You can't fake aged felt, in my opinion. So I said yes to these, and I'm guessing, depending on how common these are on eBay or any selling platform, I'm guessing these are gonna bring good money. So I am thinking probably $60, $70, somewhere around that. So I could be wrong about that, and I will report back on Instagram when these sell so you guys can see. But I love good brass bookends. Let me just say vintage brass bookends. A lot of times the ones that I've sold were of military symbols. What else have I sold? I think I had like a Celtic tribal banding looking thing. Uh, how's that for descriptive? Whenever I see brass, very heavy brass bookends that are vintage, I almost always say yes. All right, what shall we talk about now? Let's talk about metal that will not bring high money and why did I pick them up? So on the shelf, I saw these, I'm gonna call them champagne goblets. These are quite common. This is Lemsa. Lemsa is, I think it's L-E-M-S-A. I'm not gonna even bother putting on my glasses, but these are silver plate made in Spain and they don't bring a lot of money. As you can see, I paid $2 a cup so I went back and forth. Now here's my thinking. <laughs> Ready for this? Even though these typically probably bring five to seven dollars a piece, so maybe you're gonna get ten dollars looking at that price point, and I paid four, not a good return rate on your money. I feel these are good and I'm hoping my keywords carry these. So if the market was saturated with them, I would not have picked them up. But the market is not saturated. They just have a history of not selling for much that I can tell. But I feel the design is very good and I think these need like consideration to bring bigger money. I think they should bring more money. I know that's a crazy concept, 
but I went ahead and picked them up for the $4 and I'm hoping to get about the $20 to $25 mark for them. So it'll be my keywords that carry these to see if I'm able to sell this. So that'll be fun to see <laughs> if I'm able to pull that off. I'll report back again on Instagram, Lavender Clothesline, if the metal cups that really aren't worth anything sold for a high enough profit. All right, this next dish is just a little tiled dish. I think some people might have used these as ashtrays back in the day. Just little, little tiny tiles. Now these tiles I think were put in individually. Somebody sat there and did this. Sometimes the tile work that you see on tabletops and pieces of furniture, that tile actually came on like a mesh sheet and you would put down an adhesive and you would lay the mesh, kind of like a lot of tiles are nowadays. But I believe these were individually placed. And this, I think, is original to the dish. So this was created like this. I imagine this was probably made, I'm gonna guess India, someplace like that. But I thought this was beautiful. And this came from Williams Grove Flea Market. Just on a day I had picked up a lot of stuff and I thought this was cool. I just threw it in my cart. Um, yep, I'm actually bringing a wheelie cart, <laughs> an old lady pull behind cart to the flea market, which is kind of 50-50. It does help with less trips back and forth to the car when you go to a flea market, but when the flea market is crowded, pulling a cart or pushing a cart is quite the drag. And you know me, I'm on the move, so I'm hopping over boxes, I'm kneeling down, up and down, and the cart does get in the way. But this day I bought quite a bit and these were one of the pieces. So I said yes to this, I paid $2. I haven't checked this, I'm picturing probably 15, 18, maybe not quite that high. All right, the next item I bought, I love this, love this, love this. I just have a thing for beautiful wood. So I saw these coasters sitting on the shelf and right away in my cart, yes, please. They're beautiful. They kind of have like a bullseye circle pattern, like grooved, really pretty, teak wood. There's eight of them. They come in this little open-ended box. So I really liked that. And on the bottom, let me see if I can do this without <laughs> making coasters crash all over. On the bottom, Goodwood, Genuine Teak, Thailand. So yes, please. I love teak. Teak is gorgeous. And um, yeah, so that's all I got to say about those. I paid $3 for these. I have not comped them. You're going to get sick of hearing me say, I have not comped these. But I'm thinking this is going to bring 25 to 30. Let's talk about pillowcases. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but I sell a lot of pillowcases. Now, while a lot of the linens I have in my store right now are Pottery Barn and current brands, these are vintage. And you can tell by the colorway and the pattern. And you can also tell by the label. So a label of vintage items will either say Union Made or a lot of it's made in the USA. But these are Sears and Roebuck and they are fine muslin. A lot of the vintage linens that I find are either percale, muslin, you know, they don't have names like organic cotton or um, microfiber. Most of them will say muslin, percale, that type of wording. And uh, again, made in the USA, really pretty. I got two of them. Now I either paid $1.97 for the two or $2.50. So figure between two and $2.50. And I imagine these will bring between $18 and $20 I'm hoping for. All right, next up, we're gonna switch gears a little bit. And I'm gonna talk about a contemporary item that I like to find. This is a brand and this brand is the Pioneer Woman. Uh, I think her name is Re Drummond. Is that her name? Is Re her first name? I always forget. She really made a great success with branding herself. She lives on a ranch with her husband. She wrote a book that tells their love story. She has a cooking show. She has home decor and she seems really sweet. So I think her items do well because she has a really good eye for aesthetic. So I don't know where her items are sold, the home decor items and the ceramics. My guess is maybe either Kohl's or um, I don't know, if you guys know where Reed Drummond is sold, the Pioneer Woman, her stuff is branded under, would you let me know? I could probably research it myself if I remember to, but I did not leave the sticker on this of what I paid for this. I believe I paid $4 for this. 
So her items like this bring good money. So say I paid $4 for this, I'm guessing I'll probably get $25 for it. Plus shipping, my buyer always pays shipping. So I was happy to see there were no cracks or chips. You know, it's always nerve wracking when you see something you like sitting on a shelf and it's like, oh, that's so pretty. And you go to grab it, it's like, please don't be chipped. It's almost like you wish it not to be chipped. But a lot of times they are chipped in the thrift stores. But this one is in great shape, along with, looks like coffee spills or something. I haven't even washed it yet. But, so there's that. All right, next item up is vintage, but there is no maker's mark this beautiful candelabra look how pretty this is so this candelabra is vintage i can tell by the vintage dust on the marble down here this disc is marble and the candelabra itself is a metal but it's not silver or silver plate it almost seems like um i don't know i don't know my metals but this is painted over metal so i'm not quite sure what metal it is but the finish is a silver paint so how do I know that? You could just tell by the finish after a while. You can see a little bit where it's worn too. And the bottom, let me just hold this like this. The bottom has no marking, but I love this. And I think the keywords will carry this. This fits into a lot of decor. I think this is great for romantic style, Hollywood Regency. You know, sometimes I use keywords that you have to be careful you're not copying a trademarked keyword title like Rachel Ashwell who sells uh, in Target very big and she also has her own stores and brand she is shabby chic and for the longest time shabby chic was used and a lot of people got Vero's for it because that's a trademarked title or name so while I won't use shabby chic sometimes I'll say things like shabby farmhouse decor I'll make up my own I would never use shabby and chic even if I separated the two. So you can use chic, you can use shabby, you just can't use both of them because she owns that, that name. That's pretty, you've arrived in life <laughs> if you own words, that's crazy. But you know, it's just like with Nike, with Just Do It. You can't go around putting Just Do It on a shirt and get away with it. It's registered, it's trademarked. But getting back to this candelabra, beautiful. So five arm, romantic, Hollywood Regency, farmhouse, chic decor how's that all right the next item up is not vintage it's not hard goods why did i buy it <laughs> so this item we all know how sporty i am it i'm just being sarcastic is a baseball mitt softball something rollings and it looks to be a catcher's mitt right that's what that woven part looks like see so how can a 60 year old woman who knows nothing about baseball or softball pick up a mitt and sell it because we have comps. So anytime you find something and you say to yourself in your mind, oh, I know nothing about that, run a comp on it. You don't have to know a lot. And I am living proof of that. I'm going to say the majority of my hard goods I know very little about. Yeah, I do learn and I do research, but it doesn't stop me from selling it. I think that's part of the reason I'm a success. I find something, I look at the quality, I say, oh, this is really pretty and then I sell it. And a lot of times I really didn't find out completely what the item was. I have some pretty famous high dollar sales that I sold knowing nothing about the item and made very good profit. I think one of my most famous ones was uh, I went to a yard sale and I bought military transistors. They kind of looked like phones. They kind of looked like boxes. Maybe you guys remember this. And the man at the yard sale who was running the yard sale, I was buying a lot from him. I said, what are these things? And he kind of didn't know. I don't even know where he got them for, from. I didn't ask if they worked, nothing. I said, all right, what do you want for them? $5, great. I took the box, I'm thinking somebody might want these. $500 I sold them for. And guys, I still don't really know. I guess they're field radios or 
to talk back and forth, see? So don't always feel like you have to be an expert in any field. Jump in as long as the buy-in price is low. That's my one rule. I would not buy something for hundreds of dollars without knowing what it was, nope. Okay, back to the mitt. So the mitt is just a leather catcher's mitt with branding and the inside always has, or almost always if it's not worn off, the size this one is 14 inch, so yes. And I bought this for, I think this was $3. No idea what this is gonna bring, but definitely enough profit built in and way more than $3. The next item that I found, I don't think this is vintage, could be vintage, maybe on the fence about being vintage, is this beautiful shoe shine box. Look how pretty this is, beautiful wood. I think it's just a regular pine and shoe shine it is stenciled on the side. So I loved this, brass hinges, very nicely made. It's not rickety or cheap in any way. And it seems to have been made for real shoe shining. I could be wrong about that. It could be just a, you know, reproduction home decor piece for storage. But I thought maybe the companies that put out shoe polish, you know, those types of things, brushes, might have made this as a kit. So I'm gonna look that up. But for the price I paid, which was, I think I paid $4 for this, absolutely yes, all day long. Because I don't think people are gonna be rushing to buy shoe shine kit boxes, but I think this is great for, for home decor. So I said yes to this. I'm gonna undo the clasp for us so we can take a look inside. Okay, so I undid the clasp so we could take a look inside and see how nicely the box is made. Nice thick wood, really sturdy. So I said, yes. Anybody need a shoe shine? Five cents. All right, the last two items that are gonna talk about are shoes and why I picked them up, if I even know why I picked them up. I saw this pair of shoes sitting on the shelf in a Goodwill and I paid $7.50 for them. A. Gianetti, and this is Italy, right? Yeah, made in Italy. Leather slide wedge shoes, my size. <laughs> But I did try them on, and like I said, I have a lot of shoes, so I'll be selling these. And I don't imagine these are super high-end. I don't know where a Gianetti is sold. I'm going to guess at like maybe um, TJ Maxx, maybe? Could be, it could be Nordstrom's Rack, but I'm going to guess TJ Maxx, Marshalls, that type of thing. And so I paid $7.50, and I haven't comped them. But going on just the aesthetic, what condition they're in, I'm thinking 20 to 25 all right, the last pair of shoes is a brand that I normally don't pick up that much of. This is Hush Puppy. So these are what they look like. Pair of men's Oxford lace-ups. Really nice. That's that side. And the reason I picked these up and paid $10 for it, that's crazy for me, is because of the leather. This leather is so supple and so soft. It's not the stiff leather that when you put on the shoe your foot is formed this is more not like a slipper but it's not lined it's not hard can you guys see this is really super soft and i thought the man that wears this shoe is really laid back <laughs> how's that for a uh, a crazy thing but I'm trying to see if they say it's just us 11. i don't see that it says what type of leather i was expecting it to say like deer skin or goat skin but really beautiful and uh, like I said, $10. I was taking a chance because I didn't run comps. Really great condition. So I said yes to them. All right, guys, that's the haul for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out with me. Please hit the like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours. <music>